Hello, and welcome to the Notary Business Talk, the podcast dedicated to sharing ideas, strategies, and techniques to help grow your business and improve your life. And now, with more than two decades of notary business experience, your host, Abraham Zamora, the notary entrepreneur. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Notary Business Talk. My name is Abraham Zamora, and I am the notary entrepreneur. And in this episode, we're going to discuss how notaries can profit from translation services. And it's a relatively, I would say, relatively new idea to the notary industry that's been getting some buzz lately. And I think a lot of it has to do to this guest that I have on the show today. He's been a big promoter and sort of pusher. He's been, been pushing the idea of having notaries sort of team up with translation companies to offer translation services to to notaries as another toolkit, another tool in their uh, toolbox to be able to make more money and offer more value to their clients. So let me quickly introduce our guest for today. His name is Gabe Sturgis, and he works with a company called Idiomatic, which is a a translation company, among other things, that was founded back in 1996. And for the last four years, He's been working with notaries one-on-one to show them and help them how they can integrate translation services into their business so they can become more profitable and more valuable to their clients. So uh, with that said, Gabe, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. Now, let me be very clear as we get started, because some of you are going to be maybe thinking, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can do translation services. I I can barely speak English, right? How am I going to do something else at this point? We're not talking about you guys actually doing translation services yourself. The idea of this show is how you can team up with a company that you can sort of refer out as a service to to make money but not actually do it yourself so let me just be clear this is sort of the strategy so so anybody who's a notary and is out there in front of people can definitely benefit from this show from listening to what we're going to be talking today because i definitely think there's an opportunity here and like any industry any opportunity the people who get into it at first seem to be the most successful so we'll get right into it but before we get into the nitty gritty and the details, Gabe, why don't you tell us a little bit about your sort of background and how you got into the translation industry? Because it's such an interesting, unique industry, in my opinion. I've been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, I'm young, I'm 32, but um, I've been working in this industry since I was about uh, 19. And um, I, I lived a lot of my life, I lived in Spain. Okay. And that's when I met around 19 or so. I met my uh, current business partners uh, in, well, at our, our Spanish headquarters, which is north of Barcelona. And um, I started working for them doing translations. Mm-hmm. I speak three languages. I speak uh, Spanish, English, and Catalan, which is a regional language spoken in Spain. Right. Um, and... Uh, Started working for them, just out of interest, like languages. I like languages still. <laughs> After a while, they asked me if I'd like to do something more. I said, sure. Do you want to try to start a part of our translation business or, or a branch of it? I said, oh, great. I have no idea how to do anything. <laughs> Again, 19 years old. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. And around the same time, I was going to uh, about to start business school in the States. Okay. Get my MBA. Sure. I thought, all right, this is the time to try something like this because if it doesn't work, what do I have to lose? I'm a student right. and uh, started to work. So here I am after um, all this time. Now we have in charge of business in the States, we have business in Canada, in Dubai, South Africa. So it's, uh, we're, we're quite busy. Wow. Now, uh, off camera, when we first started talking here, you were telling me that, so you're an American that that's, that's yep. lives in New York now, right? Yeah. Uh, the business is located in New York. Is that right? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Yep. Uh, but you were telling me that your, your folks, your parents were doctors. And so part of their just adventurous nature, they decided to, to move to Spain and live out there. And, and so you were sort of, I don't know if you were born out there, but you definitely lived out there. And so how was that experience? I mean, that was so interesting. I'd, li- I'd like to hear more about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's very different. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a different world, different culture, different world. Uh, 
gives you good perspective yeah uh, on things there are things in, in America that are great things that could be better things in Spain that are great things that could be better and from that one of the things that my business partner taught me is who was, was my mentor really um, you try to take the best of each place or all places where you're from or where you've been or where you live and put them together and that's that's really what I've applied to our business. Um, taking what I know and what I learned from working with different people, dealing with different types of people. Yeah. And it, I don't know, I think it adds, it enriches your life when you have, when you can have that kind of contrasting experience, it makes, it makes life have a different perspective. Yeah. And so how, how long have you been, uh, so you said since you were 19, you started this branch of this company in New York. So that's, I mean, how many years is that? That's you 13 years 13 now that you've years. been doing this? Yeah. Yeah, 13 years. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it at the beginning wasn't very serious because I was in school. Right. Uh, I was being a normal, you know, 20 year old kid. But um, it's been something that we've been working on for a while. And then it got, as I got older, the business matured as well. So we kind of matured together. Um, but serious, serious business in the last maybe five, five, six years. That's great. And so what, what were some of the challenges or things that sort of, I mean, you, you mentioned this, how this experience of living in two different countries really affected the way, you know, your perspective in the world mm -hmm. and sort of how you overcome challenges. What, is, what are some things and just in building in business in general, things that I think, you know, cause you're in the translation uh, industry, we're in the notary business, but at the end of the day, we're all businessmen and women. We're all trying to be successful in business. And what are some of the challenges and some of the things that you uh, had to overcome to ultimately become successful the way you have at this point? I, you have a technical side of things, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I went, I would, I did go to business school. Sure. And that does not prepare you for actual, <laughs> the real business world. You know, I, I remember I got my very first client graduate school. I think you know something. And somebody said to me, okay, fantastic. Did the service, send me an invoice. I, how do I, how do I do that? <laughs> I, in, in business school, they didn't teach us that. And that's an example that I always bring up talking to people about, about running a business. A lot of it's just learning on the job, but the, I find the key to being an entrepreneur or being a business person is just not giving up. It just persistence. Uh, and there are definitely days when you think, Oof, is this going to work? Mm -hmm. Is this really, is this really worthwhile? And I don't know if you have to be the best at what you do, but you just have to give up later than everybody else. And I, that, that to me has been the success, the, the, the key to success so far. Yeah. Yeah. And you seem very motivated. And I, and I think part of it too is, is and when we were, again, we were talking off camera and you, you seem like you had a very, you're, you're very creative. I'd like to say in, in the way you've decided to sort of grow this business. And obviously you're doing very well given how many countries you guys serve now. And one of the things you've done, which is sort of connects to us as notaries is at some point you came up with this idea that notaries seem to be in the same market with where people need translation services. And, and I, and I mean, this is, I think sort of the entrepreneurial mind, right. That I, I that we share in common with, with, with everyone, you know, on, in the audience and, and between you and me, a sort of a common bond that we're constantly thinking of new creative ways of doing something different and something that hasn't been done before. And so, uh, one of the things that I remember you actually doing, and I remember it now years ago, you actually, I was one of these people that you called in. you had this idea that let me call notaries and let me see if, if they'd be interested in sort of partnering up because these are sort of individuals that are already out there, uh, you know, serving, serving the customers that you would be serving. And I think as a business person, this is a phenomenal idea because now you're connecting with the kind of people that would market your services. And of course, create a win-win situation where you make a profit as your business grows, but then you offer an incentive for notaries to also profit from that sort of partnership that you would be creating with them. And so 
you had this plan and now you didn't give up on that plan. And so you, what you just talked about, about just keeping going and not quitting. I think part of that also is being very clear about what you're trying to achieve and, and having a plan to achieve it. Would you, would you agree with that, Gabe? Absolutely. Um, it, you have to try. I've, I've had lots of ideas that haven't worked, but I've had, I've had a few that have. Yeah. And this is one of the ideas uh, in business that, that that's worked so far. Um, I mean, like you mentioned, you know, it's uh, working with people who are in a similar, in similar but non-competing businesses. Right. Um, notaries are very client-facing, so are we. Um, people who deal with a similar type of clientele, and people who you know you can help bring added value to their service right. automatically. Um, we actually kind of came into the whole idea of, of notaries. We had a client down in Miami who needed, uh, this is during COVID, mm. needed an app, uh, a notary notarization Apple Steve okay. for, uh, for a will or, or some sort of, some sort of legal, I don't remember what it was. Um, I thought, well, how, how are we going to do this? It was, it was a big project. So we wanted to get it. And how are we going to do this? So I looked up in line, but can you do notaries? I never, I didn't know anything about the notary. <laughs> can you do notarizations online? I Google it. I thought, oh yeah, you can. Okay, in Florida, there's this thing called ROM. Right. All right. So I get in touch with a company. They call me back right away. They help me out really smooth. I start talking with the guy who uh, owns the company. And um, I thought, oh, maybe we can work together here offering translations for his Apple Steve requests. And, and that's, that's really how it started. It was kind of seeing an opportunity, taking it and figuring out really how to do it after, but saying, yes, we can do it. And, and that's how, that's how this, this sector of our business is growing. I love it. Yeah. I think the moral here is not being afraid of trying not being afraid of uh, just making an effort to, to, even if you don't know what it is you're doing, just failing forward is what I like to say. And I always tell my daughter, you know, mistakes aren't mistakes, but they're only an opportunity to, to learn and grow. And in this case, you know, you had a challenge uh, of having to help a client out. You didn't have a solution. And through that, an opportunity came up. So I, I just, I think it's wonderful. And, and the fact that you went to business school and didn't really, you know, I, 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 I kind of, I find this quite interesting. I've always found it interesting that you go to college or school and I'm not against school, right? I, I think there's, there's a lot of value uh, in, in a lot of schools and the sort of careers, but I've always found it interesting to go to college to learn about business from professors who aren't business owners. It, it just, I've always wondered how that made any sense, but n neither here or there, right, Gabe? I'm just, it's, it's always a. a uh, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely spot on. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead now. Translation is new for a lot of people. And my hope in this podcast, in this episode, uh, and in this YouTube video is to sort of introduce people to this idea so that they can maybe plant a seed in their head that might grow into a potential opportunity in the future, because this is not something that most people have really just thought about on their own. So hopefully through this episode, people will maybe get some ideas of how they can actually integrate that into their business. And so to do that, let's go ahead and get into sort of what is translation? And uh, I know you do a few other things, but what, in what scenarios and if, and more specifically, what kind of scenarios with notaries do you think run in where a translation service would be required? Like for example, what kind of documents or what kind of customers or what specific types of um, areas in business would, would this apply and where we could pounce on an opportunity as notaries? Well, when, when I'm working with the notaries with whom we work already, yeah, um, I, I see it. I, I would promote the service in two different ways. Okay. Or I see that it could be used for notaries in two different ways. One is as an addition to a service they already provide. So, for example, um, you do Apple Steve work. Right. And you have a document, I don't know, somebody's going to move to Mexico and they buy a house, they've retired. And so you need to submit, I don't know, a criminal background check. 
for example, has to be apostate and has to be in Spanish for the, you know, the Spanish consulate or the, the Mexican consulate. So you need to submit the document in the language of the country where it's going to be used. Okay. So you would have your original background check has to be translated, notarized, and apostate to be submitted to the consulate. So that would be one spot where you could use a translation as a part of your business already. Got it. Because, it, you know, again, usually apostates have to be, or the document has to be in the language of the destination country. The other way, the other way that we try to work with notaries and promote this is as a standalone service. Okay. And that is, for example, um, maybe you work with law firms already mm -hmm. doing notarizations. Well, maybe that law firm also does, maybe it has an immigration law department, or maybe it has a family law department. Maybe the people who, maybe there's a big, I don't know, Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. And they need translations of the documents for this law firm. For example, they're submitting paperwork. You could offer that. You could say, oh, we do our, we do our notarization work. We do an FRC work. We also now offer standalone translations. Or, and that could be promoted just in the business community in general. Even to, even to, to clients you don't service already, mm -hmm. but who you may know. So you can either have it, you know, as a one-stop shop, we do the translation, we do the notarization, we do the Apple Steel all in-house. Okay. Or offer the service as a, as a side business and as an additional, re additional revenue stream. So you could, it really, it really depends how, how, I think, how much time you want to spend in promoting the service. I mean, if you just promote it with something that's tied to what you do already, it works really well. If you want to promote it as a stand, almost a standalone business, mm -hmm. uh, translation's quite lucrative, especially nowadays. Yeah. The world becomes so globalized, you know? You know, I one of, we, one of the... Um, so I'm, I'm a Mexican immigrant, right? I moved to this country when I was six years old. I uh, didn't speak a lick of English. And I remember I would cry in school when I was taking tests because I didn't know what was on, on the pages, right? I didn't know how to read and, and, and uh, speak English. And so, uh, so, so we have a lot of family in Mexico and we go back often. Uh, my wife's also from Mexico and her family lives in Puerto Vallarta. So I don't know if you're familiar with Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. But the cool thing, the interesting is that uh, thing that in Mexico, something interesting has happened that a lot of people are moving out to live out there to particularly to retire because as you know, Gabe, it's, it's a lot less expensive to, yeah. to live in Mexico. Right. Uh, one of our, uh, one of our uh, cousins is a real estate agent right? he's from Colorado. Oh, so he married my wife's cousin. So he's an, he's an American white guy from Colorado he moved to Mexico for the same reason. He sold his business, moved to Mexico. He ha he became a real estate agent. The guy doesn't speak Spanish, Gabe. And we went to go visit him just a few months ago. I think back in November of last year. And and so we're asked we asked him, hey, uh, uh, you know how how's the Spanish going coming along? And he says, you know, not very good. I have no one to practice with out here. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's in Mexico, and so. The, the point is that in, in this little town, Puerto Vallarta, it's become so popular with expats and Americans that over 60% of the people that live in that, in that city are Americans. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And most people are, are, are you know, are, are from Canada or from America and, uh, and everybody speaks English. I mean, it's one of those things, right? And we're seeing this more and more and more. And so my friend, he's, he's a, my cousin, my wife's cousin is a real estate agent, but he services Americans that, that want to move to the United yeah. States, which just gave me an idea, Gabe. I, I could probably have them talk to, yeah, that, you know, that might be something there. I just realized that might be an idea to connect you guys with, with, uh, with him. But my point is that, yes. So this example that you gave of somebody who wants to move to Mexico, right? Uh, they need, so you're saying they need like a background check. They get this background check. They have to first get it uh, translated. Is that the thing? Then it gets yeah. notarized by, uh, I'm still not sure about the, how that works, but I'm sure we can get into how, what, yes. what gets notarized, the actual certification or the actual. Uh, the translated document. Oh, I see. Be notarized. 
I see. And so- then, and then because that's what you'll need to get it to get the apple Steve for it. Okay. So yes. You'll submit. You know, so you have the translation, notarization, apple Steve. So, so, so put, let me just put this together. And this is, this is going to be really mainly for people who offer Ron remote online notarization, right? Because yeah. we're, this is an opportunity for everyone in the country, but someone meets somebody who wants to move to Mexico. They, they come to you, they find you online. They say, Hey, I need these documents translated and notarized. Can you do that? Well, most people, and I've had that question come up several times where they've asked me, do you translate? And I've had to always say no, because I, I don't. Right. Mm-hmm. But somebody gets asked that and now you can say, yes, I do. And they would get the document translated. Then the person that, so the notarization is the notarization of whoever's translating the document. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So that would be you guys. So if, if a notary partnered up with you, they gave you the business, they referred you, we'll talk about how you, we would compensate notaries in a minute, but then you would also give them the opportunity to notarize that document. Is that right? Absolutely. What, so we try to, well, first we always try to keep, so, uh, if a notary comes to us with a translation request, uh-huh. uh, we need this document translated and, and we got, and we have to get it notarized for Ron with Ron. So we always do the notarization with them. So we don't charge on us, on our side, we don't charge for the, the notarization. Okay. We consider that kind of like, a, just kind of part of doing business. It's just kind of part of the partnership, you know? So we don't charge for that. So we only charge for the translation. Okay. The notary, would charge their client for the notarization cost. Got it. So the only thing the notary would pay is, is well, uh, would pay us for the translation or if they're, you know, if we partnered, then, um, there would be an affiliate. Really the only thing on their end would just be, would just be invoicing their end client for the, for the notarization and the translation. Got it. Okay. Right. So, and then that could be, that, that could the vary in different ways, but that, that would be logistical stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, if the notary chooses to do the apostille, then they could also do that. Otherwise you guys can do that if they don't. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. And um, I was going to mention just very briefly that in the States that don't do wrong. So for, kind of California, for example, you can't do wrong. Right. Uh, South Carolina, I don't think you can do wrong. Uh, we're big enough as a company that we can have people notarizing in the state. So actually like a, a hand notarization, maybe not in your city, but we can do it and we can send it out to you now. Okay. All right. So there's a solution for that, for the, the states yeah. that don't have a run. Excellent. What are some other types of examples where someone might need something translated? You give you the example of like a uh, background check. I'm assuming like if someone, what about like a destination wedding? Someone wants to get married in Mexico. I mean, is that, uh, give me some examples or scenarios where someone might run into someone that's asking for something specific that would need translations. Just to kind of get our juices flowing here. Destination weddings is a big one. Is it? Um, that's, that's a really big one. Uh, maybe you've had, I don't know, um, maybe you're trying to get a passport because I don't know, your, your, your mom was born in Germany. Okay. So you can get a German passport. So you need to submit documents for that. Um, I mean, it's not the nicest thing to think about, but death, uh, funerals, if they have to, um, repatriate the, the body. Mm-hmm. That's something that also needs translations. So funeral homes are big. Uh, that's a big source of, of Apple C business, mm-hmm. translation business, and translation business. Um, what else do people? Uh, <laughs> adoption. That's okay. another one. Adoptions. Yeah. If you want to adopt someone, a lot of times you have to translate the documents uh, into the language of the country where you're adopting from. Um, and then outside of directly tied to notarization or Apple Steve work. The, um, the industry that I, I always recommend people going after are lawyers. Okay. Family law, divorce law, immigration law. Um, those are, that's, that's the big industry now, especially. And now everybody needs their immigration work done. And then, and then we'll get to that strategy, but now that's, that would be going after direct business for yeah. translation service, not as part of something that is being asked of the notary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 
Wow. Okay. So, and this is, and, 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 and particularly with lawyers and, and attorneys, uh, you know, this, this could even, uh, there's, there's really even a potential to earn a sort of a residual passive income once you get that account established, is, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. So for those of you who are tired of going out every single day to notarize documents, uh, you know, sort of this, uh, you, you're getting paid per transaction, right? What we call earned income. Here's an opportunity, and, and I'm being enlightened myself, of an opportunity to be able to earn a residual business passive income where you can set up a connection between Gabe and his company with like an attorney, for example. And once they start using Gabe... Every time they go in and place an order to get something translated, you would get a, a percentage of that total amount. Is that correct, uh, Gabe? Is that how, kind of how you're yeah, setting things yeah. up with notaries? Exactly. And that's um, that's for life of the client. There's no limit to how much you can earn. There's no fine print. There's nothing. If a client comes in and they order you, you, they, you know, referred by you, you get commission. Wow. That is a, a, a win-win scenario. If, if I do say so myself, Gabe, that's, that's very smart. And I think it's great because it allows you to grow your business exponentially. Cause now you have a bunch of notaries out there marketing your company while at the same time, giving them an opportunity to make money for themselves, yeah. for their families to achieve their goals, their values. Super exciting. Wow. I am fired up, you guys. So good stuff, good stuff. Now, listen, let me let me just kind of interrupt here and let you guys know that if you're enjoying this show, first of all, give me a little thumbs up if you like this show, if you're watching it on YouTube. And if you really enjoy the content, this show isn't going to be possible without your guys' support. So if you're getting value from this, from this show, and I always say trading value for value, right? If you guys are getting value... You know, try, you know, I would, I really appreciate you guys reciprocating that value. And so to do that, you can always support me through Patreon. If you want to do that, you can go to patreon.com forward slash notary. Right now, we just have a, a monthly $5 contribution where you guys can sort of contribute on a monthly basis. And that will help me continue to do more of these shows. I don't do them as often because I just have to keep working and running my business. The more I can get support from you guys, the more of these I can do. And I hopefully that is something you guys will consider doing. And again, I have a challenge that if we can get seven more Patreon subscribers, I will start doing those AMA Ask Me Anything shows. So as soon as that happens, we can go ahead and get those started. And you as a Patreon member will be invited to those uh, exclusive AMA Ask Me Anything podcast episodes. So. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the two sort of ways that we've identified a notary can use translation services as a way to make more money because we're not just notaries. You know, I call myself the notary entrepreneur because being a notary is not just signing papers and putting your stamp on it. It's about being a business owner. It's about a way to achieve a goal that you want to achieve. Notary is really just the means to some greater end that you're trying to achieve, whether it's staying home with your family, you know, quitting your full-time job, being self-employed. And so this is part of, and in my previous show, if you haven't heard the previous show, I talk about adapting to the market and being willing to sort of build what I call a notary business network. And this is what I'm referring to. This is the sort of out of the box thinking that I think is going to be required if you want to be successful in business and successful as a, as an entrepreneur. So we briefly talked about this, but let's go ahead and go over it again. So uh, a way for a notary to promote this is either as a standalone service or as part of a chain of uh, services that include the notary service. So it really fits in as, as part of what we as notaries would do. And it's not hard to imagine that since it has to be notarized, that people would come to notaries to uh, offer this service. Now, it, as 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 a as offering it as part of the notary service, there are a few ways of promoting this, right? And I know you're you're into SEO, but uh, I can think of like having a website. What are some ways where a notary can market themselves to try and attract clients for this sort of uh, integrated part of their service? Uh, uh, you want to talk a little bit about how you've seen notaries succeed in marketing 
this type of the first type of uh, way of getting business as part of their service? Well, we've come across, I, I think it depends also on the area where you are. Okay. Um, you know, in, in, in larger areas, I think is where you have more requests for this type of thing. Okay. In general. Yeah. But, um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be, it can't be offered anywhere. Um, usually we find that it's people who notaries, um, somebody will come to a notary. Okay. I need a translation of this because I'm submitting a document abroad. Do you guys know of anybody who does translations? That's, that's what I've heard a lot from some of the notaries who, who work with us already. And before it was until they, before they started partnering with us and working with us, it was, well, I don't really know anybody. Look on Google, look for somebody nearby. Right. Or, you know, I've heard that somebody works with this other company, give them a try. And now notaries can say, well, actually we offer this already. I partner with a company and we can offer this in-house. You won't have to talk to anybody else. You won't have to get a quote from anybody else. Uh, we can sort it all out for you here. You won't have to do anything else and it'll be quicker. So I think, you know, the value there is trust, which is, I mean, we've been in business for almost 30 years. Right. Um, I think that speaks to our, our business, the quality of, of what we do. Mm -hmm. So you have you, the notary to their client can say, well, we can provide you a trustworthy service. You don't have to waste any time going out looking for quotes or trying to uh, figure out, oh, is this company good or not? And it's a convenience of it. Because it can just be done right there. It's one time, one person you have to talk with, and the document only has to be submitted or sent once. And that's that adds value because the more the more hoops you have to jump through and the more uh, times you have to talk with different people, the more likely it is there's to be a mistake. Some. Yeah. So that's one way. Yeah. It's already business that you get. Um, marketing. You know, I know I know there's a very active notary community and right. forums and uh, your podcast, other um, other podcasts, other Facebook groups um, on the websites on your websites, LinkedIn. Um, I'd say just general word of mouth and referrals. That's, I mean, that's always the best kind of business, right? Yeah. And you talked about like uh, demographics, right? Or, or, or like location. So uh, notaries, I mean, it's, it sounds like the opportunity is there for any notary, but yeah. the biggest opportunities uh, are probably people who live, you said in bigger cities, uh, have you, have you noticed people who maybe are bilingual and are trying to get you know, people who maybe speak Spanish, for example, have things translated into English, for example, like, mm -hmm. is there an advantage? Like what kind of notaries and in what areas would you say the opportunity is greatest? It really depends. Any place that has a significant, that's, that's, any place that's multicultural. Okay. Really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you always think of, what are the big places you think of? Oh. California, Texas, uh, Florida. New York. Um, Florida, yeah. uh, Illinois, Chicago, huge right. multicultural population, New Jersey. Right. Um, I mean, nowadays it's really anywhere. It's really everywhere. Yeah. Is, <laughs> that's, that's what, that's, that's one thing that's the beautiful thing about America. It's so multicultural and every, it's so cohesive. Right. Um, so you people, you find people from anywhere. Right. Um, of course, if you're in a small area, maybe there's less people. That also means there's less competition. Absolutely. I was just going to say that. <laughs> you know, you can play things. It's, it doesn't always have to be a disadvantage that there aren't tons of people around. What, how many different languages do you guys translate in? We do over a hundred. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so we can, uh, pretty much any request you have, we can, we can take care of. You also said, you also said you guys offer translation services. You also offer a pastiche services. What was the other thing you said you guys offer? Um, Translation or something? Uh, so we do uh, translation. So okay. that's written documents. Yeah. We do interpretation services. Interpretation. That's spoken. Uh, we do localization, which is um, adapting adapting content for, for local markets, like, you know, um, online advertising, that kind of thing. Got it. Um, we do, we have a side business where we do SEO services and website 
hosting that type of thing. So we do, okay. we do, we have our fingers in lots of different pies, but um, just to quickly mention it for interpretations as well, there's a, it depends on the state. Okay. So some, some states from what I understand in the notary bylaws or statutes, um, they forbid notaries using a liaison, using an interpreter if the, the signer doesn't speak English. Correct. Other states, Florida, for example, is one that allows you to do it. Hmm. Um, you can have an interpreter uh, acting between the notary and the signee. Wow. So another service we offer, which also um, is part of our like partnership with notaries, if you have someone who needs to, actually today, on Sunday, we had a request from a notary for a Macedonian interpreter. So from Macedonian because they had a signee who didn't speak English, who spoke only Macedonian. So got online, video conversation, and they they sorted it out. They sorted out the signing. So that, that's another, one of those things you don't really think of, but it's a big opportunity. Wow, yeah, you're right. I mean, to be able to not lose out on business because now you can find yourself with an interpreter to be able to communicate with that client. Yeah. Especially if it's a big file or there's a lot of things that have to be notarized. Very interesting. Good stuff. Okay, now let's talk about uh, uh, the conversation that someone would have if they're trying to, say, specifically target a market to promote translation as a mm -hmm. side passive income business, right? And you, yeah. you gave us examples of like attorneys and maybe funeral homes or, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what other examples, but who would people, who, if, if, if a notary said, okay, I want to, I really like this opportunity. I don't want to be passive about it where I'm waiting for someone to ask me, but I want to go out there and actually maybe promote this, your, your guys's company and then get paid every time this service is used. Who could notaries go visit, like, like for example, uh, attorneys, and if there are other examples, I would like to hear them. And then how would that conversation go, uh, Gabe? So, again, the, the lowest hanging fruit are our notaries, or sorry, our, uh, our lawyers and attorneys. Okay. Lowest hanging fruit, absolutely. Uh, the, you know that there's a need for it. Um, it's B2B which is great because if you get one client, they bring you multiple clients. Right. So every time that's multiple transactions, right? But for you get multiple transactions for you finding one client. Right. Um, and it's steady work. So I, anyone who's trying to get into selling translations, that's the side that I would focus on. Uh, not that it really matters for the person trying to offer the service, but also it's usually pretty standardized stuff. They're not going to ask for unusual things. It's pretty cut and dry. All right. Uh, schools are a big one. Hmm. Um, most schools, well, as far as I know, all school districts in the U.S. have to, uh, for like inclusivity, mm -hmm. have to offer uh, all the all the documents that get home to the parents or the paperwork. They have to offer it in the language that the student or the parents speak. Example, right? Um, hospitals, okay. healthcare clinics, those are big ones as well. And also, that 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 can be a, you can parlay that into doing notarization work because I'm sure that hospitals need a lot of I need need uh, legalized documents. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, those that would those are the big industries that I would focus on if you were going to go talk to somebody, actually go out and pursue it. Well, yeah. Um, and, and you mentioned, I mean, that, that's a great, that's a great opportunity because it, you're, you're not just showing up as the translation guy. You're also showing up as the, the notary guy. And so you're coming in with, with an opportunity to get both sides of the business. Uh, if yes, that's correct. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, I, I always see businesses as active and passive. So the active side is you going out and getting people. Right. And the passive side, which which does have an active component to it, is your website. That is, I mean, nowadays in 2024, the web is one of the best ways to get clients. So I would say, in addition to actively going out and talking to people, it's really building up your website, really making sure that you have a good presence online, really making sure that people can find your website for, well, Primarily for your notary services right. or your Apple C services, but also for 
translation service in my city. Right. You want your page to be up there. And this is now, now we're getting into, we'll, we won't get into it today. That's a different episode, of course. But now we're talking about SEO, search engine optimization, having a Google My Business page up and a Yelp and backlinks and just being able to be the guy that when someone types in, I need a translator, translation service in my area that you pop up and they give you a call, right? So we're talking about that yep. local sort of uh, local SEO marketing uh, strategy. Uh now this is a question and, and I hope I don't throw you off guard here, but what, how is this, you know, I mean, we, we, we're, we're here about AI and artificial intelligence. How, how is that going to impact your, your business? Uh, I assume that with the stuff that has to be certified, like notarized and stuff like that won't really be a, a, an issue, but uh, as AI becomes more prevalent, like in schools and stuff, do you see that as um, a threat to your business or, or, or vice versa? Is that something that can actually enhance what you do? I think it's, I think it's like a calculator. Okay. You know, a calculator, a calculator doesn't put an accountant out of business. A calculator helps an accountant do his work yeah. better. And an AI, I mean, AI is real, you know, it does, it's good. You yeah. Know, you can't deny that it's really good in the, for languages and translation. It's good. Um, I see it as a helper. Yeah. So it lets us do, It'll, it'll get rid of low level work. Because if, if you need before, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you had an email that you needed, you got from, I don't know, a company based in wherever, and you needed that translated into English. You would send it to a company. Right. That doesn't happen anymore because you have Google Translate, you have ChatGPT, you have Gemini, you have all these AI models, right? Language models. Right. Um, for us, we see it as it'll help us do more work with a better quality and more quickly. Right. So we can actually benefit the client more. And if you provide a better quality product more quickly and you can do it uh, more consistently, mm -hmm. your prices don't go down. Your prices go up because clients will pay for that extra efficiency. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, make, it, doesn't, it doesn't make your service less valuable. It makes it more valuable. So I see it as a, I see it as a benefit to what we do. Um, and also, I mean, if a lot of our business is working with notaries, certified translations that have to be submitted to the, the U.S. government, for example, they need to be signed by a real person. Right. And that's something that AI just can't do. Can't do. Right. Right. And just like a calculator, the, the better the, the person uses the calculator, the better they'll be in business. And it sounds like you guys, uh, and not every person and not every business owner is really sort of taking advantage of the value of AI, but it sounds like you guys definitely are. And so um, as someone who would want to partner up with you guys, I think that's quite encouraging. So um, yeah, very good. Uh, any, any final words, Gabe, before we wrap up this, uh, this episode? No, I mean... Um if, if anyone is interested in partnering with us, we're, we're not a huge, I'll, I'll say this, we're not a huge company. Right. So if you want to get in touch, you can talk to me. Yeah. Um, we're not a faceless organization. Um, we're small enough that, that we really, each person who would like to join us and, and work with us yeah. matters. So um, if they have, so if they have like, once, once they get started and they need to talk to someone to sort of, get strategies or to sort of work on how they can promote what you have to offer. You're saying that you're the kind of person that's hands on and you're yeah, the person that's yeah. willing to, to kind of get it's in the trenches with them. It's win-win business in the end, you know, I mean, yeah. if, if anyone who wants to work with us become successful, we become successful right. and vice versa. So it's in everyone's best interest to really create a strong partnership. Yeah, I love that. And so I, and just so you guys are here. So now if, if this is something that piques your interest, guys, if this is something that you say, you know, I'd like to get more information about it. I'd like to learn more about this. I, I'd like to know how this is part of uh, what, what, what Abraham, the notary entrepreneur is talking about as being part of a notary business network and how that can be integrated into your business. I think there's two ways we can definitely uh, go about this. If this is something that you're interested in the first way, is to uh, just submit an, a request of interest to, to Gabe and his company. I'll go ahead and include a link 
to to uh, to to communicate with him in the show notes in the uh, uh, in this video or podcast, if, depending on where you're listening, for you to be able to submit a request now. This is not something that's automatic. Gabe does have a few things that he asks about and sort of wants to know about you as a notary. So, you know, there are no guarantees that he will work with just everybody. He does want to make sure that the uh, benefit is is mutually beneficial. Uh, the partnership is mutually beneficial and win-win. So he'll ask you some questions about how you plan on marketing and that sort of stuff. But, it, uh, you know, don't let that stop you or, or, <laughs> or freak you out. Gabe's a nice guy from what I can tell, unless he's a really good actor and, uh, but no, he, he's a nice guy. And so you guys can definitely communicate with him that way. The other way is to just email me, especially if you're thinking about doing this as a bigger part of building a notary business network where you're going to offer more than just this. And so if you want to learn how to kind of integrate this, send me an email. I'd be happy to send you some information, maybe respond with some suggestions. And to do that, you can always email me at contact at notary business talk. Dot com. But for now, those are the two ways where you guys can communicate with us. If you guys want to uh, uh, learn more about this, send me an email. I'll, com- I'll, I'll connect you with Gabe or you can go ahead and l- click on that link below and uh, and then you can f- f- submit that request form to uh, express your interest. Uh, Gabe, anything else before we go ahead and uh, wrap this up here? No, for me, that's it. Uh, just again, th- thanks so much for having me on the show. I uh, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, please, anybody's interested, get in touch. We'll, we'll talk. I'll help you answer any questions you have. And uh, we can see what we can, what we can do. I love it. Yeah, Gabe, Gabe, well, let me just say you're a young guy that's ambitious. I like the way you think. I like how successful you've been. And I see a lot more success for you in the future, my friend. So thank you again for being on the show. Uh, I'm sure my, myself and uh, the audience really appreciates you coming on and giving us this great information. Thanks so much. Hey, you're welcome. And for the rest of you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you got a ton of value from this show. And until next time, until next time, I, <laughs> I got away from the microphone there. Make sure you stay productive, stay safe, be well. Thank you guys for listening. Bye now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Notary Business Talk. To learn more about becoming a notary entrepreneur or to find out how Abraham can help you achieve your business goals, visit notarybusinesstalk.com.